Hello everyone and welcome to another week in our garden. A little bit delayed with this video because of the weather, it's been absolutely atrocious. At one stage it rained for 15, 16 hours non-stop. It did flood the garden a little but thank goodness when we put that greenhouse up we lifted it a good 12 inches up because we had 5 inches of water in the bottom of the garden so all's dry all is well now this week we're starting if you can remember i like to save my fuchsias and geraniums over winter in the shed and every year i do this but for those that haven't seen it i'll show you how i do my fuchsias and geraniums for overwintering okay now the compost we use is just a 50 50 compost potting compost that is and grit sand so it's really really gritty and will dry out we don't want it to stay wet else the plants will start to grow we just want them to hold for the winter in there this is a geranium that's come out of one of the pots it's got a little bit of root because it was the smallest pot but that's fine as you can see there's loads of flowers and dead flowers on it so the first thing we're going to do is take all those off i'm going to put them in this old bucket so i can put them on compost so you just go around and snap the flowers off if there's just beginning to come into flower like that one take it off we don't want them and that one there you'll find that if they have flowered and they're getting dry they're actually harder to get off so you have to be a bit careful with those there you are this is you can see this this is difficult to get off normally any leaves that are damaged take those off but we will be reducing the top anyway let's get these flowers off we don't want it wasting its energy flowering now we've done them. we know it's red and know it's a good one so we want to keep it now that i'm just going to reduce some of these long shoots a little bit with the secateurs so we'll just if you see this one coming down there's a nice shoot coming off it there there's one there as well but I like this one better so we'll just take that off this one that one's all right new shoot coming there look that's fine this one it's got a shoot there so we'll take it off just above and then that one's fine I think you'll find that one will die back anyway so we'll take some of the leaves off now and just reduce them not too much what you'll find is any leaves like this one here that's been damaged when we've been lifting it etc that will go yellow and drop off anyway so let's take it off now there we are that's not too bad that one ought to come off early that one's rubbing that one not so that one may as well come off that'll soon open up that'll be fine and then i get a, a bamboo stick and just go round and knock the compost off a bit and we're also looking for vine weevil grubs while we're doing it because if you don't want to be overwintering the vine weevil grubs else they'll just eat your plant come spring they'll always be looking it's not too bad it's quite clean this one actually but you will find them and you usually find them right at the top here but you'll see where they've been eating the roots as well so you'll soon get to know where to look for them. Now having done that, I'll just clean it off a little bit more. There you go. Right. That's nice. And then the roots, the long roots, we'll just take those off. 
like that. Look. Then that can go. This is a quite a big pot that have half filled with the compost I showed you. And then it's just a case of popping them round. You can get one, two, three, a good 15 of them in there. So you really pack them in tight. And then for now, I'll just put some compost on it to stop that root drying out now we've exposed it. There's no need to fill it with compost. If you take it up to about where it is now, that'll be fine. Right, this is a fuchsia. As you can see, it's, I think this has come out of the garden rather than out of a pot. Yes, I think it has because it's got soil on it. So, same way. Well, if you look round it, all these damaged ones that's been damaged while they've been lifting them, take those off. There aren't many flowers on this, but what there is, we'll take off. But we'll be cutting this back severely anyway, so. Keep an eye out to make sure there's no rust or anything on the leaves. No good taking rust through the winter. If there is, you need to strip every leaf off. Now on this, we'll just take these off that's doing nothing down here, look. You see, that one's doing nothing as well. And that one. Take those off. Now we're going to reduce the top. We don't want to overwinter all that lot. We'll never, you'll never keep, it'll want to grow and it'll want water in. But we don't want it that, we want it just to shut down, ready for the winter. So if we just go round, take a good third off, at least. There you go. Once you've actually got your eye in doing it, you can do it quite quick. Take that off. If they get warm and they're nice and moist, they will start wanting to grow again, but that's what we're trying to avoid that. We don't want them growing. Take that off, look, it's sticking up. Take that out. Try and cut back to a node every time, like we normally do, even when we're taking cuttings. Keeps the plant tidy as well. That's not too bad, that one's a bit big there. Yeah. That's okay. So now, the same as what we did with the geranium, it's going to take a little longer because that's a fair old root ball there. And we just keep poking. The white, you can see, is the powder that we put on when we planted it right from a cutting. Diane will pop the full name of the powder on for you. But it's done its job. Now if you lift them and they're very, very wet, it's perhaps as well just to let them dry out a little before you do this. If it's too wet, you won't get this compost off. So now we've taken the compost off. We can see there's no vine weevil in there. And it looks like there's been no vine weevil in there, so that's nearly ready. We'll just trim the roots again, like we did the geranium. Not too severe this time, they're not too long, but we just take them off, look. And then, I'd normally put this into another pot, but for this, I'll just pop them in there with the geranium. You can put them together, there's no problem. And then for now, I just cover it, just stop the roots drying out while I do the rest. Now, when you get onto doing your geraniums, this is one that's come out of the pots at the front of the cottage. You can see it's quite a substantial plant. So that's going to take even longer to clean and thin, but it'll be exactly the same as that. So it doesn't matter the size of the plant. Likewise, this fuchsia that we've taken out, 
it's a trailing fuchsia and it's as you can see it's quite pretty but the roots haven't made much growth at all it's actually broke one there look when we dug it up that's fine as long as you cut it back to six or seven inches and put it in one of these pots that will be fine that will overwinter this is slightly too wet for how you want it so you when you think it needs watering don't then really you just water just enough just to keep the plants alive i put mine in the shed i might put some in the bottom greenhouse this year because i'm a bit short of room in the shed at the moment but there needs to be a frost free place doesn't have to be warm but frost free and as i say keep them just moist just to keep them alive and then in the spring we'll start giving them a little bit extra water and as the days warm up they'll suddenly all burst into growth again and then we can repot them and put them in the flower pots and the beds well, this is one that we actually overwintered you can see the really old wood in there that we overwintered and this is the size of plant you'll get by overwintering the plants it's a, a little bit of work but it's well worth it especially if you've got somewhere where you can put them it doesn't need to be bright light but lightish but most important is it must be frost free now I've been doing these for a couple of weeks when it's raining it's something to do in the shed and in the greenhouse I really have got a lot of plants overwintering this year so it will not only give me a lot bigger plants for next year it saves quite a bit of money as well now a lot of people like to keep the names on them but we think if we're keeping overwintering the fuchsia or the geranium it's one that we don't want to overwinter and then by next year we come to plant them out they've all got flowers on so we know what they are the names have long been forgotten but the beauty of them stays with them. i'm going to leave this for me i need a bit of a rest from this i've been doing it for weeks we're going to nip round to where the blueberry is because i've saved a couple of bags of leaf mold and i just want to tip those onto it i've put two on one side but just want to put the two on the other side and rake that down ready so it washes in for winter right we're at the blueberries now i don't know if you can remember when we planted these there was just two very small plants and they've grown up quite well and they have this amazing autumn color and it, it, when I come down in the morning, they sat there smiling at me. It's so nice. Right, I've, I've saved a couple of bags of leaf mould to put on the blueberries. I've put two on the other side. I've just got to put two on this side and then just rake them in. I think once I get them on, the chickens will sort it out for me, but I'll rake it down anyway. Wonderful stuff. It's obviously very wet and quite heavy, but it'll be all right. Again, lovely stuff, look at that. it'll soon be time to be out there collecting the leaves again there we are then let's rate that down I use the four prong rate but I should use it upside down so I can push it up you see it breaks it up a little bit as well because it's quite lumpy in that um, bank. just push it through and as I said the chickens will jump in shortly and sort it out anyway I'll let that we'll let that wash in for a little bit 
right now we'll leave it like that over winter chickens will be down shortly to sort it out anyway I see they've just popped their heads around the corner see what they're up to we'll leave that to settle and wash in through the winter and in after December beginning of January when we've got the Christmas tree is finished we'll put that through the shredder and that can go on as well and but I'll also add some ericaceous compost to it to make a good thick mulch okay now the next little job I need to do is to check grease bands make sure we've got plenty of grease on ready for the winter there's still one or two pests that want to climb up into the apple tree and the plum tree to lay their eggs or even over winter up there so we need to make sure those grease bands are in good order we're down at the plum tree I've done the apple tree because when I was forking around it I noticed its collar had slipped so I had to go and do that straight away as you can see the grease is drying out and anything can go up there now I've done the other side so we just did this can you see look there's no grease on there at all I just use this fruit tree grease Diane gets it for me from Amazon it's quite reasonably priced but it makes a good job and we just I keep this old paintbrush with it so I can just keep coming down and putting some on that's the old collar still there and the string is beginning to break so next time we might have to put a new sticky band on but when you do them remember always use jute string because as the tree grows it will snap the snap the jute string but we just put plenty on there can you see where it's broke the string but that'll be alright for now plenty on a little bit more just there look now anything that wants to climb that now will get stuck in that grease and will protect the crop that's a dirty old job doing that but very very worthwhile the plum tree this year has produced or oh, at least six plums I'm afraid the late frost took all the blossom out and it struggled all year with uh, I think we had pretty bad aphid attack on it but it'll be all right next year we'll start again hope we'll get no really late frost and it'll be fine now we're uh, down here on plot D in the heaviest rain we've had this year this was under about six inches of water but within 12 hours it had drained away so we're not too concerned but it has left the soil quite wet but by digging it now I forked a lot of it over to let the air in to dry it out now these four plots are going to carry next year's heavy feeders your beans your peas the onions the leeks will be on one of these beds in the tunnel keep the moth away so we really need to put a, a lot of good rotted compost into the root zone now to do this is very similar to what we did for the brassicas but remember we didn't go so deep with the brassicas for these crops we go a full two spits so it's full double digging now if like me you still dig this is the way I do it but please remember if you're going to do double digging don't go and hurt yourself there's no reward for a bad bank so do a little bit use the strings and if it's getting a bit too much go and have a cup of tea and a sit there okay now if you see I've got this far now can you see the soil is very very high 
that's because we've double dug it through the winter that will drop back down to its level again as the the manure etc compacts down and the worms do their job so what we do we start with the trench exactly the same as we did before and take the soil out the first trench and I put it over there as you can see so when I get back to that that will go into the final trench so we dug the trench trying to get a full spit down and now I put my manure into the trench just before I start doing this I need to change over to my digging boots so if you'll bear with me for a moment I'll just put my boots on now what we do now is we tip the manure into the trench this is a good farmyard manure and garden compost mixed together and there's quite a bit of straw in it as well now about half a barrel load so if you think on the full length across it'll be a full barrel load so make sure you've got plenty of compost in there you are all of it now once we've put the compost and manure into the bottom of the trench level off now there looks quite a bit in there but remember this is only done every four years on this plot before years before I come back to it so don't skim make a good job of it while we've got it open just level it across best you can now we're going to dig the second spit and what I use is the steel handled fork I use this steel handled fork if you use a wooden fork there can be that much pressure on this heavy land that will snap it so I use this so I can get more leverage on it so what we do push it in all the way and turn it in now you can see oh, you can see how sticky it is down there and that is the clay as you can see it that's the clay bed that we're trying to work on so every time we do this we break that clay bed up a little it's not all like that aren't there? some good bits get down there and turn it good clay soil but you're putting goodness into it directly into the root very very heavy this old must have been some old trees here at one stage huh? Keep turning it. If you see the leverage I have to use, you can see why I use the steel fork. Looks like a medieval pot. <laughs> Get well now, remember, and then break the top. Break the top. Make sure you've got it all. Yeah, I've got it. it's nice. Good depth. And level out. Now having 
dug that. Now we need to take the string back for the next trench. So if I just pull that side out. I have these markers so I know where the trench ends when I'm digging over. Just pull that out. I'm using the shovel as a spacer. And then put the string about there, I think. And walk it on to the beam. Same again. Put it in an angle so you stretch it the core. I've put barley straw on top of, of the soil. I get it out the chicken pen. I put it in the chicken pen, they clean all the seed out of it and then I bring it down here and put it on top. And this makes it easier to walk on. Because if you think trying to walk on this wet clay after rains, you would sink and you'll never get all off your boots. So that's why the straw's on. But it's also good to turn the straw into the top layers as well because by spring it'll all be gone. Now we use take over to the spade, make sure we've got those markers in and then start and tear. We just go one spit at a time, I remember. When you're doing this, don't try and dig too much off at once. If you came here, it's very, very heavy. You must take a little bit of time to make a, a good job on breaking it all. Right, so if you take a small bite off, remember it's an angle for your first one, and put it in. You can see how wet it is. And then taking it down to full depth. Take the straw with it. Same again. I'll do two and then I'll do the last and we'll come back. Good stuff. If you notice, I tend to put my body weight onto the spade because I've still got a bit of a bad knee, so I don't use my legs to push the, fork, uh, the spade into the ground. Again, right? Not too much. And really build it up. So I saw now dig across to that end of the, to complete the trench and then come back now I've dug the trench across as you can see and now we get the just flick that in that's it we get the uh, shovel which is about as old as me though you can see it's worn out and what we do now we just take the crumbs out and then don't go deep just take those crumbs out and flick them up. Make it tidy. Just take those few and that will do. That's now back to put in the next compost in the bottom, the manure if you like, in the bottom. And then we start digging it in and then we move back once more. If you look at it, it's still quite lumpy out there. 
Now, the frost in the winter will break that down as it sinks. And in the spring, we can just rake it over with a four prong rake, a little bit of fertilizer in it for the top, and then we can put the plants in, and that would be good. All the manure is down in the bottom of the root zone, and that's the way I double dig. But remember, if you're trying it, don't do too much. I only do maybe three or four trenches a day, and then I pack up. Because any more than that, I think you'll be, I'll be struggling. Now we've got a bit of harvesting to do. We'll do that as we move up the garden, and then we'll finish up at the shed. Right, we're just going to try and lift one of the parsnips. I might need a rope if they're any good. If they're full of fingers, they'll be easy to lift. <laughs> Let's see how we go. Trouble with this, can't get no levers there. I'll have to come out. Might come, might not. Right, so there's one. I'll lift a couple, so we've got a couple in there. To and, uh, there's another one. That one's not so good luck. It's still usable. It's a good parsnip. So those pair will make us a lovely dinner over the weekend. Now they want washing, so we'll go and get some Brussels, some leeks, a cabbage, and some celeriac to fill the barrel up. And then we'll give them all a good wash and let you see what we've got. I've been and picked this cabbage up because uh, Diane was flashing, so she had to go up to the house for a new battery. Well, that's what she says. So uh, there's the cabbage. I just cut the stalk off. I've also lifted a few spring onions. You can see they're getting a little bit on the big side now, but they're perfectly all right. They just want a good wash. I'll take this off. There you go. I'm not going to strip it too much because we know we're not going to get all this washed and prepared in this light, so we might have to come back tomorrow to do that. But we will finish the harvest. Now, you remember that we got all this straw down, some nice barley straw on it, to stop the frost from ruining the tops of the celeriac. It's doing, it's doing a good job. But I'm just going to lift that one there for now and then we'll lift those leeks, see what they look like. Before I put the barley straw on, I put some coffee grounds between the celeriac just to help keep the slugs down. Because with barley straw, especially when it gets really wet, you will get a slug or two. Let's have a look, it's a good plant, not so we'll take that one. It's solid as a rock, so I'll have to get out with the fork. Right, what does it do? I have to just cut some of the roots off so we're not taking too much soil with us. Nice, nice salaria, that is good size. And And say we'll pop that in the wheelbarrow, wash it later, that's a good celeriac that one. And then we'll move up and we'll take a couple of leeks. I think we'll have these two end ones and see what they come out like, okay? Might be in well. I think actually I could have done with the steel and a fork to this piece. I don't know though. There you go. Right. Let's have a look. I 
it's clean I'll just clean some of that off and take a leaf off to have a look what we've got everyone up to now has been nice and clean but I'm still cautious if it doesn't make the grade it'll have to go to the incinerator that's all so let's see I'll strip another one, that's the best way to do it. I'll pick this up later. There you are, look, perfectly clean. What a wonderful leak. So now it does pay to put it under this mesh. Would you like another one? <laughs> that is a good leak. Oops, I'll have to move the fork. I can't put it in there. Come on, girl. Come on. There's one. It's a good one. Now we'll do the same again rather quickly because we need to get this. We've got some side shoots coming on it, but that's no problem. That'll do fine. Right, let's see what we've got. Let's clean up to now. Let's have a look with this one. Yes, they're clean. I'm very, very pleased with that. Look at that, though. You'd not one to find a pair of leeks and that for your dinner this weekend. I'm so pleased I put these leeks in the cover. So from now on, leeks under the mesh in tunnels. Been shopping this morning at the supermarket and there was, there was a nice turkey top in there. So we couldn't resist it. So we've purchased it for this weekend it'll go very nice for this veg but the only thing we haven't got yet in the wheelbarrow is a few brussels we can't have turkey without a few brussels so i'm going to pick a few of those we've had some good frost so they've had some frost on them as you can see i've had to stake all mine because they're just falling over this is the first pick of the brussels so it's going to be a lovely meal. What I should do, the bottom ones are a little bit small, the bigger ones are running around here. As you can see, that's a good mark of a hybrid when the sprouts are actually in a coil going up the stem. That's good. So we'll just take a few off. Oh, he says, there you go. There you are, do excuse my dirty hands again. A good picking of Brussels now, ready to go with that lovely turkey top. So I'll pick these and then come back to you. There you are, there's a nice few Brussels there for that one meal. Now these, I've had a few good frosts on them, so they'll be very, very tasty, even though there's a bit of mud as well. Now we're definitely running out of light. It is coming up to half past four and we're ready for a cup of tea as well. So what I should do is put the wheelbarrow with all the crops in the shed and then tomorrow we'll take it out, get them all nicely cleaned up and then present them to you to show you what we've harvested. In the bottom greenhouse I put in some very very late tomatoes and they're actually just beginning to turn red so in the next week or so I'll show you some November tomatoes <laughs> that'll be different it's Halloween tonight here so I'm expecting one or two people to come round and see if they want to come borrow my bison broom but 
I haven't decided how much to charge them yet if it's still here and uh, so we'll see you tomorrow let's go up and have a cup of tea hello there and good afternoon now we've waited till ooh, what time is it nearly half past one from yesterday for the rain to stop now we've just got a little bit of clear sky so we're going to show you the harvest and tell you what we'll get up to next week okay now this is what we harvested this with a lovely cabbage it's very very solid good autumn cabbage that'll be as you know a couple of superb leeks absolutely perfect and very very pleased with leeks the a few of the spring onions just an handful to keep us going for now then we've got the parsnips one good one one fork that's perfectly all right it's usable the lariang i've tried to make it look presentable but there's not a lot you can do with a celeria they're the ugliest things but they taste absolutely superb and then we've got a few of the brussels sprouts very very nice they are the good solid sprouts i'm very pleased with them and they have had a good frost on them so they should be very nice for the weekend now that'll be it for this week hope you've enjoyed it many many thanks for watching and thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it next week we'll clean some tools and sharpen some secateurs and get those ready for winter there'll be some other jobs i'll find somewhere now by the way i've been nominated by our friends bill and val three things we've learned this year so i shall do that later in the week a little bit busy at the moment so i'll do it later in the week and then we'll find three people to nominate as well so hopefully we'll see you next week bye now <laughs>